Tom Erb. I, I teach in uh, computer music in the music department, and I teach the undergraduate classes in ICAM, many of them uh, recording, uh, music programming, uh, and computer music. It was, uh, you know, I, I went to school in the 70s and 80s, so there wasn't really so much computer music out there. Uh, but I was interested in music. I started out uh, playing in bands, being a DJ, doing these kind of things that are typical, but I got very into it, very interested in all kinds of music. And um, I, I guess I was a bit competitive with my DJ friends to see who could find the oddest, most interesting, most strange music. So I, I got very interested into um, uh, experimental music, uh, music which explores different things. Um, and when I went to school, I, I had natural science bents, and my family had a lot of engineers, radio engineers, um, electronic engineers. So I went into computer science and there was not really a path to do computer music, so I had a music minor and computer science major. And when I got out of school, uh, I found a research assistantship open at uh, UC San Diego in computer music. I had no idea such a thing was possible, but I sort of hit a home run on my first job and was able to pursue research in computer music from then on. While I was going to school, I was also interning in a number of recording studios, and um, sort of the tradition of the recording studio is if you, at least the old tradition is, if you need it to be better, you build it. So you use your knowledge in electrical engineering and later computer science to just sort of build things you need for your studio. So when I was doing a lot of recording, and then, uh, I found that the tools, especially the early computer tools, were somewhat uninspiring. And uh, at the same time, I was teaching students uh, how to, you know, the fundamental techniques behind these tools. So I find myself, for class, building a lot of uh, computer music tools, or rather music tools, on a computer that uh, were more inspiring and had a more organic human quality. You know, things where the tools could allow you to do things that were almost mistakes. You know, they weren't really contained. I tried to give the tools lots of range and lots of uh, natural feel. And then this became what I'm teaching. So, I mean, I've, I've built a lot of software. I built one of the first uh, freeware software packages for music for the Mac in 91. Uh, and uh, I've just always been concerned with um, computer music that helps people become better musicians and uh, helps people become more creative. That is, tools that don't lead you to a solution, but lead you to lots of different possibilities. I mean, first is to follow your dream, you know, try to think of, but you might not even have a dream, so admit yeah. this, you might not know exactly where you're going. Uh, but keep your interests in the forefront and things will open up. There, I mean, I went to school when there was nothing like an ICAM program. You couldn't integrate, you know, art and technology in any meaningful way. You could just sort of a la carte take a little of this and that and try to put them together yourself. But I found a position where I could do this. And I had lots of friends who also were led into different career paths. Maybe they ended up, I mean, I ended up moving across the country to do it. But you find these opportunities and you weigh what's, you know, important. And those things will open up. So follow, you know, follow what you love first. The other thing is, um, when you're at school, I'd suggest uh, taking everything that interests you and don't, you know, I've, I took classes in film, I took classes in philosophy, I took many classes in engineering, and there, and of course music, and I didn't think at the time that I'd fit them together, they were just things I was interested in. But almost everything I did in school became useful later, in one situation or another. What's going to happen 10 years from now is not what's happening now. And the careers that will be around 10 years from now are going to be completely different and unpredictable. 
So, like, there was no computer music career when I got out of school, but it just started happening. And no one knew that would happen. Now you could go to companies like Netflix, Apple, whatever, and they need people in computer music. You can go into uh, traditional production. You could, but even production has changed. There was never an engineer that specialized in vocal layering in the old days. You used to be like jack of all trades, and that's how you would learn. But the future is always different than the present. And uh, I think, I guess, just it's good because things will open up and things will change and things will be dynamic. So you can change what you do and maybe do something that's new and interesting. You can create these trends. But the other thing you have to, I think the best success is if you remain flexible, if you remain open to that change and to be able to jump into whatever new direction or push the new direction if you're able to do that. Yeah, we have a number of sequences uh, in, in uh, computer music, but I teach 174, which is the music recording class, and every year we have about 25 students, and we go through the process of recording from uh, using microphones, from um, doing the actual recording, to uh, editing the tracks, to layering things, to separating instruments, learning the roles of the different instruments. A lot of it is uh, learning how to rely on your ears and also respond to peer pressure in making your mixes better and better. We go into mixing, into mastering, and completing CDs, uh, if CDs are still a thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know that things are changing. Um, but we, we just sort of try to, uh, I try to address all genres of music. I mean, I can't say I keep up with all genres of music, but I try to do it in a way that is um, addresses anyone's tastes, anyone's sort of cultural background, um, and uh, anyone's love. But the thing is a common love for sound and music and just learning how to do things as well as you can. So that's my recording sequence. Uh, by the end, I feel that every student should be sort of a master of the recording studio in a way that they'd be comfortable doing something good and they know how to get they know how to get to a high quality you know polished production um, and or they know what they're missing if they can't you know who they might need to work with or you know who they might need to add to their production team um, so for that that class is really preparing students to go into a creative environment where they may work in uh, sound design for games, they may work in Hollywood, they may work in a regular recording studio, uh, and they'd be able to function. You know, they'd know all the equipment, they know what people are talking about when they say that that track has, you know, is too crispy, that track is too boomy or whatever. They know the language. And then they know how to do things about it. I try to give them enough production ideas so, you know, they have the resources. Um, the other course I teach is Advanced Computer Music, which is a junior level course, and we talk about um, how to use computer to make sound, and what the basic techniques are, what the basic theory, you know, acoustics, uh, how the computer deals with sound, how the computer deals with samples, and really I'm trying to give the students enough background so when if they end up in a career path where they're building the next set of sound tools or designing the next keyboard or um, or if they're going into graduate studies and they want to look at more theoretical aspects they have a mastery of all the basics now the the course we have here we have two courses a uh, basic and advanced sequencing computer music mm -hmm. and I'd say the ICAM students get a very similar um, background that most masters in computer music get at other universities. So we try to advance our students to a pretty high state. So if they do to go to grad school, they'll be heading straight into research without having to, you know, develop so much of a mastery. They'll already have that. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other course I teach, I teach a, um, a programming class where students learn how to program their own computer music plugins. So we look at audio unit plugins, VST plugins, and I show them how to, 
you know, incorporate basic DSP ideas to build their own things like filters, uh, echoes, reverbs, those kind of things. Um, and that's just a quarter, and it's, it's actually kind of a small class, like 16 students at the most, but uh, every one of the students come out of it knowing pretty much how to program. Um, we teach in C and C++, which is a little bit of a challenge because most students just have a Java background, but it's similar enough that uh, we're able to, I'm able to get most of the students through that each year. Oh, and that's also grad students participate as well. So it's a very diverse group of students. The path always changes. The first step is to network, to have friends. Uh, the second step is to have an idea where you're going to go. If you want to get into film, you probably shouldn't stay in San Diego. Uh, you should be aware that, uh, and I'm, I assume you mean the entertainment industry, but yeah. our computer industry, if you want to get into computers, you want to be in the Bay Area mainly, <laughs> and maybe Seattle, and there are certain areas. If you want to get into pop production, you probably want to be in LA, but you might want to be in Atlanta or New York. The various genres, you know, gravitate around various cities. Nashville, for instance, you know, a, if you want to do um, other cities have more uh, commercial production, like San Diego actually does a bit of sports production. Uh, we have a bit of um, gaming in the San Diego. Uh, Sony Games is here, but it's awareness of where the need is, you know. So the students have the most trouble are the ones who decide, you know, I really want to live in Monterey and that's where I want to be based because that's where they grew up and they find that the industry is not there or it's difficult. But it's, it's good to have an awareness of where the places are. The second thing is to look for internships early on, to look at your uh, summer after your sophomore and junior year and see if you can get a summer internship at a company which is somewhat like what you're interested in. I'm very, I've always maintained an interest in this stuff. I mean, obviously, I like doing this stuff. Uh, but also as a teacher, I always feel that you need to, um, you need to do things as well as teach things, you know. So if I'm teaching recording, I should be recording. So I've, I've produced CDs every year. I work uh, with uh, the artists here on the faculty, but also other friends, and so I do about six or seven recordings a year. Um, the other thing I do is I design electronic uh, music instruments, so uh, this is what's been flashing behind my shoulder. Uh, I've designed a bunch of these synthesis modules for a company uh, called Make Noise there in Asheville, and uh, this one is the Telharmonic. Uh, this is an oscillator. This one's a delay called the Echophone. I don't name these, by the way. Uh, I didn't even name this one. This one's called the Herb Verb. It was named after me. It's a reverb unit, but everyone everyone thought, okay, this, this is so great. We have to name it after Tom. And uh, these things all make sound. And there's a little sound going. I don't know if your mic will pick that up, but it's doing a very loping sort of echoey thing. But yeah. They're, they're all programmed. These seem like very old school analog synthesizer, like what you'd see in the 70s. But in fact, each one of these has an embedded microprocessor, uh, an ARM chip, um, and I've programmed them in C. And uh, this is one of the things we do in the computer programming class. We look at programming for single board computers and how to make an algorithm fit on a uh, on basically a computer that has no operating system. We have a number of ICAM classes. We have a lot of ICAM students. Uh, we'd like to have more ICAM classes. So I, I do expect growth in ICAM music. We're, we're thinking about different types of faculty members that might add more to the program. And so, you know, we're thinking about that thing. We, We'd like to um, enrich the sort of theory and history aspect as far as uh, electronic music history. And this year we have a new faculty member who's doing some of the production classes. That's uh, Natasha Deal. So really happy about that. And uh, we're just trying to 
you know, broaden, respond to what uh, what the students want and where they're going. 